Uh, my name is Brandy Brassell. I work with Warrior Bride Ministries. We are a ministry that um, we minister inner healing and deliverance, but we specialize in some of the most traumatized um, survivors of satanic ritual abuse and human trafficking. I think that um, I think that satanic ritual abuse is a lot greater and a bigger problem than most realize, and probably even myself in some, submersed in it as I am. Every neighborhood with 250 homes in it, 14 had satanic ritual abuse taking place. We had a client come in that his grandmother had brought him in. He was, um, from what I understand, fairly high up in ranking um, in a satanic, I guess, congregation or coven. And he talked about killings and murders and rituals that had he had experienced um, in an army. He spoke of it like it was an army, because it is. The enemy is after our children at whatever cost and whatever avenue he can get to them at. I'm a satanic ritual abuse survivor. The Christian church says all the time that they fight an enemy, but I don't think they're aware of how organized and strategic the enemy that they're fighting is. That there is a intentional plan to break their children an entire war for their offspring. The things I've heard from our survivors are the very things that you read about in Deuteronomy with the children being passed through the fire to Moloch. It's not something new. It's been happening. It's for ages and people want to stick their head in the sand and act like it's not happening or this is not true or it's made up or it's a conspiracy. I've met too many people with the same story from pl different places all over the world. We've got clients in New Zealand and in Canada that tell a very similar story and there's no way that they could have made that up. They're too similar in circumstances they're too the the rituals are the same the torture and the trauma is the same we started investigating these secret satanic cults when a british member of parliament linked them with the ritual murder of children in this day and age it sounded too far-fetched as did suggestions that the same thing might be happening in australia but then we met teresa teresa is now 15 but at the age of two, she was left in the care of this woman, the grandma she called Nan. And that, she says, is when a torment started. During these ceremonies, was Satan the devil ever referred to? He was called Lucifer. Um... What did they say about the devil, about Lucifer? That um, killing the people made him happy. Sacrifices to please the devil. According to Teresa, the worst rituals took place at a house somewhere in the country. It was big, you know, expensive. From the front, it looked like a castle. You know, it had a long drive and big double wooden doors. Do you think they were rich people then? Very rich. People don't understand that how organized it is. There's a satanic calendar. Grand climaxes happen four times a year. Those are major festivals. Think of your Christmas, your Easter, big holidays. We're talking major rituals, the September marriage to the beast ceremony. And if you look at the dates, the majority of kidnappings in the United States happen a week before because there's a preparation. Each satanic holiday requires a specific sacrifice. 
whether it be blood or sex or an animal, newborn babies, whatever they needed for blood. Let me get this right now. Are you saying that you saw more than one person killed in that house? Yeah. I've seen um, loads of babies killed there, just newborn babies or aborted ones which were only small, you know, four-year-olds, any age really. One sixth of Georgia has 37 comments, 37 comments, four grand climaxes a year that require the sacrifice of a child or a woman. That's a lot of people. Where do the kids come from, the majority, that they're used for this? People don't want to know that answer. If you're finding this hard to believe, so did I at first. If there is an expert on satanic cults, it would have to be him. Do you believe Teresa's story? I believe Teresa's story. It's exactly the same story as I've heard from men who says they've done it. You've dealt with other cases like hers? Yes. 21 cases like hers, he says, in the past two years alone. Themes like they were put in boxes with spiders and worms, where they were trapped in fear, where there was a high use of excrement and urine, where there was talk of human sacrifice. Both of Take just one of those rituals, putting children in boxes with spiders and worms. Now, listen to what Teresa told her mother. And they had a coffin-like box that children were put in with spiders and snakes and the lid shut and left in there. Did you ever encounter the dream crime ritual? Growing up, yes. What was that? What was that like? It was the brutal torture of children within an inch of their life. This is a very common occurrence to encounter survivors that have lost children. And as children, they've lost children. Um, I think as young as 11 years old is what I've heard and encountered of babies having babies and watching them be sacrificed. Multi-generational ritual abuse survivors. We're talking about if I were to have a child who had a child who had a child that's undocumented in these rings. So they breed kids for the specific purpose of using them for sacrifice? Breeders. And it's more common than you think. And the rest of the kids from foster care, orphans, people that don't have any family. We have had um, several clients come that were trafficked and transported through Child Protective Services and foster care system. Federal or state organizations, they, they want to deny that it exists or deny the problem because a lot of our children are passing through their hands. They are absolutely a part of the problem. There are hundreds of children in Arizona who are missing right now from state custody. State lawmakers are now questioning how 70 foster kids can go missing. In the meantime, the Arizona Department of Child Safety says tonight they can't locate 44 children who are supposed to be in their custody. Investigators believe the four children may have been taken from their foster home. They recovered 25 missing and endangered children over the wow. last month. One in four was part of what they believe an alleged human trafficking situation. In Orange County last year, they had um, a bust for these traffickers. 65% of those victims were wards of Child Protective Services. Not only were they wards of Child Protective Services, but check this out, they were never reported missing. 